so this is a huge huge privilege from heaven they're they're calling the person and inviting him to participate to take a part in the Hilula of Rabbeinu Kadosh and especially in this amazing holiday Chag HaSukot, Kushpizin de Moshe Rabbeinu how can a person even start appreciating and having the right enough gratitude to Hashem Asher Tov Gemalano that gave us so much good and helped us so much and set our destiny to, to see it between generous and wise and holy and righteous people to spend our lives between people with good intentions, with pure intentions just to have that share in our life and not to hang out all day long in the streets with all the outsiders just really to try to put our minds into the Kedusha, into the holiness King David is saying to Hashem, Atatomich Gorali, you supported my destiny to believe in you. That's the explanation of the Mitsudot David on that verse. Atatomich Gorali, you were supporting my destiny. You made me to believe in you. Even the faith, Abraham Avinu is saying to Hashem, it's written on Abraham that Vayamen Bashem Vechashvah Lolit Zdaka, that he believed in Hashem and it, it was count as charity so one of the explanation is that he was holding that as charity that Hashem was doing with him to give him faith who am I to be worthy to believe in you the fact that I believe in you is because that you revealed your face to me you let me see you you let me recognize you without you exposing yourself showing yourself revealing yourself I wouldn't see you in the world if Hashem choose to hide himself like we know that Moshe fell on his face when he heard that Hashem said, in that day I'm going to hide my face from you. Moshe lost his mind. He fell on his face. He fainted. Because if Hashem decides to hide his face from you, it's the end of the story. Now the fact that you believe in Hashem, it's because that Hashem is showing you proofs, evidence to his existence. If he'll decide to hide his face from you, that's it. You went off the derech already. You're, you're off the derech. The fact that we still have holy desire and good will and pure will to serve Hashem, that's the kindness, that's the mercy of Hashem, of the Creator. Now, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, that today it's his Yorzeit, it's his Hilula. He was the messenger of Hashem Barach to complete something that started already thousands of years before. The righteous people, all of the time, they took that. It's a mission that all the righteous people took on themselves to reveal to, to the world the kindness and the greatness of the Creator. And that every person will have a way to connect himself to the Creator. Many things that happened during the years of exile and all kinds of sorrow and difficulties that we went through separated us from Him, caused arguments and doubts and lackings in our faith, all the wars and decrees and bloodshed and, and, and all the difficulties and, and, and all kinds of, 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 of sorrow that we went through brought our minds to doubt Hashem and, and, and not to be so sure that Hashem He still loves us and cares about us and the righteous people from the fire and from the difficulties jumped out to the surface everyone with his unique power and talent and, and ability and permission that we, they received from heaven to reveal the godliness, to reveal the greatness of the Creator and everyone did the best that they could and Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, I like those Hasidim that their hands are filthy with grease from oil, working like mechanics with their sleeves, uh, like they're, they're, they're working, they're sweating. He, he likes those kinds of Hasidim, the ones that are ready to jump into the fire 
the ones that are jumping into the water, that are not afraid from some filth and... and, and. So Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, he revealed to us something that none of the righteous people was able to, to reveal with such an amazing light, like Rabbeinu. And Rabbeinu completed something that it's his uh, legacy for us, for the generations, that's what he inherited. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said that every person that will spend every day time in Hidbodedut, in a simple conversation with Hashem, so Rabbeinu promised to that person, to every one of us that will keep that advice, a promise that never been heard before, so great and so huge. It's written on Rabbi Yochanan that on his deathbed he was crying. More than 2,000 years ago he was crying. His students asked him, why are you crying? So he answered, I don't know, where are they taking me? It seems like I did everything good, I was serving Hashem, I was keeping all the rules, all the halachot, but sometimes there is a path that looks straight, but in the end you can reach death. And I don't know where they're taking me. It seems like I did everything fine, but I don't have no guarantee for that. So I don't know. So he was crying on his deathbed. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslev promised that every person that will dedicate in every, time, every day a certain time for a simple conversation of prayer with the Creator, just to talk to Hashem like you talk to a good friend, that was his main guiding to all of his students, and especially to Rav Nathan, that he told him, when you have help from heaven, you talk to Hashem in your Hidbodedut like you talk to your best friend. To have a simple conversation like that every day with the Creator. Rabbi Nachman of Breslev promised that the person that will keep that advice, he, Rabbi Nachman, took that on himself to guide that person to complete his tikkun, to fix himself completely, and to walk in a path that is straight and, 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 and set for him by the roots of his own soul. That you will fix yourself completely and gonna heal all of your soul completely, from head to toe. And that's a promise that Rabbeinu promised and gave us and every person that is dealing with difficulties in his life and with pain and sorrow and doubts and questions and he doesn't find himself when he goes and start talking to Hashem he sees that all of his problems just disappear and that's the secret that Avraham Avinu revealed on his own as a person walking in the desert and looking for meaning and purpose for his life and he found the Creator he found the Creator with prayer simple prayer Avraham Avinu didn't have a studio, he didn't have no rabbis to teach him, he didn't have no one. He was revealing the Creator, he just found out that there is one. And he started talking to him. And that's how Avraham Avinu established the prayer that we're praying in the morning, Tfilat Shacharit. Because every morning, first thing that he was doing in his life was to go and talk to the Creator. He had a certain place that in that place he was going and doing it but the dude. He was talking to the Creator, he was asking for all of his needs, and he was asking all of his questions, and all of his doubts, and he was asking, and praying, and hoping, and, and yearning to Hashem. And when he had sorrow and pain, he was sharing with Hashem, and he was praying. When he saw people suffering, he went and asked for them for mercy. When he needed help, he went and asked for Hashem to assist him and to support him. When he needed everything he needed, that's what he was doing. And Yitzchak Avinu followed his footsteps and did the same. But he was a little bit weaker than his father. He wasn't in the same level of Abraham. So one hour it would do it every morning was not enough for him. So he established Tilat Mincha. After four or five hours into the day, he felt the Yetzara was attacking him. He couldn't continue that day without another one hour of it would do it. So he went and made another one hour. And Yaakov Avinu was even weaker than him. So Yaakov Avinu made the third hour it would do it, every evening and he established Mayriv. So 
On us, Rabbi Yochanan, in the Gemara is saying, Masechet Brachot, Belevai v'itpalel Adam kol ayom kulo. On us it's written that we need to talk to Hashem Yitvarach 24 hours a day. We're losing our minds every minute. Every phone call you lose yourself. Every text message you lose yourself. Every food that you see in front of your eyes you lose your mind. Every smell you lose your... Every moment you lose the purpose. Every moment, even if you decide, okay, even Rabbi Nachman himself is telling on his childhood that when he started to serve Hashem, when he was young, he was falling every day, few times. And he found it so hard. And in the end, he decided from that day on, I'm not going to back off anymore. And what was his de decision? What he accepted on himself? He said that no matter how many times I'm going to fall, I'm always going to restart to serve Hashem again. He didn't say, I'm not going to fall again. You cannot stop yourself from falling. Sometimes the test is not not to fall. It's to see if after the fall, you will stand up back on your feet. If you will start over. If you will admit. If you will be humble enough to say, I'm sorry. If you will be able to go and to apologize and to restart. That's humility. And that's the path that is very important for me as, as a Hasid Breslev, as a person that loves Rabbeinu. You know that Rabbeinu promised many promises to his people and he said, Chadman Shai, one of my people, one of my people. And the students asked, okay, so how are we going to know if we're from your people or not? So he said, it depends only in one thing, in your love. If you love your Rebbe, so you're from his people. In that it depends. Not in the length of your peot, not in the length of your beard, of your zakah, not in how many times you've been in Uma, not if you're doing chatzot or not, in how much Rabbeinu is stuck inside of your heart. If you love the Rebbe, so the Rebbe is with you. That's what Rabbeinu also said to his students. He said, if you're going to love me and you're going to love each other, and love will be your bonding, your connection, you can pull me back to your generation. I can come and live with you. And we're not talking about spirituality or fantasies or dreams. Or we're talking about help from heaven, that you will feel that Rabbeinu is opening the path for you, that you will see the hand of the individual supervision on your life, that the right book is opening in front of your eyes, that you, the, the, that you see amazing things that happens to you in life. For an example, I was here in, in the Yom Tov and I, I like... I'm used to give lectures all of the time, to speak and to meet my friends and students all of the time, but now Hashem put that crazy idea to live in the forest into my mind, and we came here, <laughs> and there's nothing here. <laughs> but suddenly, in Yom Tov, we had a holy guest that knocked on our door and came and said, hey, if you can come, we heard the Breslev came to town, we want you to come, and then I came, and then I hope that Hopefully I'll have a place to speak in, in the Ilula of Rabbeinu HaKadosh. From the desert, from the forest, it's hard to, to organize. And then Hashem Yitbarach is opening, and here we're sitting in a Breslev Sukkah, and in Melave Malka, and, and, and you see that Rabbeinu is opening the path for you, that Rabbeinu is, is, is carving the way for you, that Rabbeinu is giving you the things that required for you, the things that you need to accomplish, the things that that, that is, is, is right for your purpose. Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender, that he was the, the, the main rabbi of, let's say, 50 years ago and, 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 and before in Breslev. And Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender said that Rabbeinu said already, Nitzachti v'anatzach, gamarti v'egmor. I'm going to win, I'm going to accomplish, I'm, I'm going to finish. He knew it. But Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender said, but we need to try that it's going to go through us. Yes, Rabbi is going to make it. The redemption will come. But you need to see that it's going to happen through you. How many people that will come back and will do tshuva, will come back to Hashem, that number is already written. The question is, how many of them will come through your sukkah, will pass in your table, will listen to your class, will receive a book from your hands, I remember a person, he doesn't remember me, but I remember him, that one time I was in the Western Wall, in the Kotel Amaravi, 
And I saw that hippie guy that came from Australia, barefoot, he was standing over there with his white uh, outfits from, I don't know in, in, in which market he bought the, that, those, those uh, clothing. And he's standing like that and talking and talking to the Creator, to I don't know who. And I had a small book of Likutet Filot, The Prayers of Rabbi Nathan. And I put that book between his stuff, all of his stuff. I just put it over there. He was busy in his meditation, flying from one side of the wall to the other. And I just put that book that I was carrying with me. We're talking about maybe 15 years ago. And after four or five years, I didn't see him after that. I just put that book. And after five or six years, I saw him with a black suit and a hat. And he's a bus level chassid. And you don't know what Rabbeinu is, is doing through you, using your, your good will and your pure intention, and using you for the purpose of such great things that, as people, I know about myself. I can teach for hours, I can teach for days straight, and I will talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, and the truth is, that all of my words are coming out from that amazing book, the Likutei Moran. And even if I'm bringing my own unique shade and color and my character into, and my sense of humor and my life experience, but still, the advice and the hope and the chizuk and, and all the wisdom that there is no despair in the world at all, and that you should talk to Hashem Barak, even if it become to be your nature, or a second nature, or that you find that that light is who that you really are in Pnimiut, and it's really you, but how did it came to your mind in the first place? How did, did you really start at that, or, or did that you heard it once from another Hasid Breslev, or from another book, or someone that spoke with you, talked to you, and, and gave you that book? I remember in the beginning of my tshuva, I tried to read in many, many books, and I couldn't find myself inside of them. And Hebrew is my first language, and I can understand, and I learned, and, but the books that are like books of Torah are very hard to understand. Not because of the language, because that they're very, very smart, and they're holding very, very high wisdoms, and the authors, the righteous people that wrote them, try to put as much wisdom as they can in short words to make a long, long story short. And it's very hard. And I remember myself reading the Breslev books and I said to my wife, at least now we found books that are written in Hebrew. I meant to say that they're understandable. You open the books of Breslev, you open the books that have been written by Rabbeinu or by Rabbi Nathan, been written 200 years ago in the world that was speaking only Yiddish, and they're written like they've been written now in Tel Aviv in, in 2017. And like, how can it be? Rabbi Nathan received such a divine spirit to know words that will be discussed in the streets today. He's using slang of, of our modern, I don't know if you can call it culture or, or reality, but the, the language of the streets. And he wrote that in days that they were talking on the Yiddish in their shul. And the Ukraine Yiddish that is so hard to understand. And even though that Rabbi Nachman was talking Yiddish and telling his classes and his, his words of Torah in Yiddish, and Rabbi Nathan was translating them to Hebrew, and it, it's, it's a modern Hebrew. And how can it be? Only because the, the Creator, He used those righteous people for the purpose of bringing us back to path, back to life back to, to holy desires and to wake up souls that no one else in the world can wake them up. There is an amazing story on, on one of the students of, of Rabenu. His name was um, Pin, Rab Pinchas Yoshua. And Rab Pinchas Yoshua one time came out from the Tzion, from the holy grave of, of Rabbi Nachman. And he saw students that were young, young, young people that were waiting for him outside. And one of them was Rabbi Avram Sternartz. Rabbi Avram Sternartz was the grandson of Rabbi Nathan and also Rabbi Aaron of Breslev. So we're talking about a very righteous man, but he was still a young kid. And he was waiting outside and he saw 
one of his rabbis, Rav Pinchas Yoshua, coming out of the Tzion HaKadosh, of the grave of Rabbeinu. And they were very happy to see him coming out of the Tzion, and he came, and Rabbi Avram Sternartz, in his book, is describing that meeting and telling about it. And he said, we saw Rav Pinchas Yoshua coming out from, from the Tzion of Rabbeinu, and looking at himself, like scanning himself, checking himself from head to toe. And after he finished looking at himself, he said, we felt like he saw all of his lifetimes, like, we, like he is scanning every particle of, of his being. He said it was so deep, like he was literally x-raying extra, himself, checking every detail inside of himself. And he said that after he finished looking at himself, he was um, sighing, say, Ne'enach. And, and then he said that for thousands of years he was coming again and again to this world and the righteous people, the biggest righteous people, the leaders of the generations, they couldn't handle his soul. And he said it's like a builder that works to build a flow and a, a house and every righteous man was in charge on one flow. And he said the, the way that the builders are working is that they have a pile of stones with that with those stones they need to build that flow and the stones that are cut in a, in, a, in, a, in a good way and they can fit into the wall into the building so they're putting them and the stones that are not so perfect so they're working on them a little bit and and, and straightening them up and putting them into the into the building but there are stones